market in Longxuan, capital of Angyang province in the Mekong Delta, stallholders sell local produce, including pangasius or giant catfish. They're bred in their millions here in the Delta. Waste from the fish farms flows unfiltered into the Mekong River. Fan Ti Chukyang has been running her own farm for a year. It's situated between two branches of the river, and we can only reach it by boat. It's a conventional farm with a stock of 240,000 fish at the moment. The oldest are now seven months old and weigh at least one kilogram, so they will soon be ready to harvest. The younger fish are being fed in the pond nearby. Fan Ti Chuk Yang sells her fish for a dollar a kilo. She learned her trade working for her family's fish breeding business. We are going to make our farm more efficient. We breed good quality fish. They will meet the standards. Vietnam's fish breeders have few opportunities in the American market. High import taxes make the fish too expensive. This has cost thousands of jobs on the fish farms. So what happened? For years, the United States was one of the most important export markets for Vietnamese fish farmers. The problem arose because catfish are also bred in Alabama and other U.S. states. Dean Wilson's family has been in the business for 30 years. He tells us that clean water and food without chemical additives are standard on his farm. This cannot be said for imports from Vietnam. I do know the state of Alabama has tested foreign fish that contain malachite green, chlorquinolones, which is an antibiotic, and the only way they can raise fish and be competitive is to use those illegal substances that aren't illegal in China or Vietnam. Another complaint is price dumping by Vietnamese breeders. The Americans have sealed off their market. The catfish lobby has won. Only their fish can be marketed as catfish. Dean Wilson sets great store by this. The Chinese and the Vietnamese, some of them probably raise a good fish. The problem is we don't know which ones raise good fish, which ones don't raise good fish. I just want the whole world to know that when they eat a catfish, it's a U.S. farm raised catfish. What do the Vietnamese breeders think about this? We visited the Fisheries Association in Angyang province. Vice President Le Chi Bin told us that the association was set up in response to American criticism. These days, breeders like Fan Ti Chuk Yang are better informed about standards in aquaculture. Since the association was founded, our members' aquaculture practices have improved. For example, they used to produce feed for the fish themselves, but now they use the feed from the feed producing companies. The farmers also work more closely with the factories that process their fish. NTACO is one of these factories. Here, the catfish are processed into fillets for the international market. In Vietnam, people cannot afford the luxury of only eating the fillets. A worker earns the equivalent of $200 a month. Labor is so cheap that it's not worthwhile installing machinery to do the job. After 15 minutes in the fast freezer, the fillets are ready for packing and export. No longer to the US, but to elsewhere in Asia and to Europe, a new market for the Vietnamese, and one in which they're doing very well. The fish arrives in Germany after six to eight weeks.
Germans ate 34,000 tons last year, and catfish has become very fashionable. From the Vietnamese fish farm to the German table. Bangasius has become a very global fish. Originally destined for the Vietnamese market, now it has fans all over the world. Of course, that's also because it's very cheap. Cheap, firm flesh, few bones. It's ideal for restaurants and canteens. Subject to strict quality controls on residues, for instance, the fish is further processed for these customers. Frisch's firm is also seeking to benefit from another trend. Organic food is booming in Germany right now. I figure the market in Pangasius has increased 300 to 350 percent over the previous year, and we're expecting a big increase in years to come. Two companies currently breed organic catfish in the Mekong Delta. They use organic feed and no chemical additives. And when it's not feeding time, there's much more room than in a conventional pond. The operators are optimistic. Even though organic Pangasius is too expensive for the Vietnamese, there are customers thousands of kilometers away who are prepared to pay for it.